Firstly, let's look at joint entropy. So prior to talking about joint entropy, let's remind ourselves what joint probabilities are. So let's say I have uh, message sets M1 and M2, such that if I have some message little m1 from m1 and little m2 from m2, then there's some joint probability of both of those occurring at the same time. And I can write that probability little m1 and little m2. Let me just use a, let me just use a p for that. So the interpretation of that, like I said, is the probability that m1 and m2 occur together. From uh, probability, you should remember that if m1 and m2 are independent, then probability of m1 and m2 is equal to the probability of m1 times the probability of m2. Otherwise, we generally have um, conditional probability. Expect that the, the interpretation of this a conditional probability is if I know that m2 has happened, what does that what does that tell me about uh, what does that tell me about m1, or how does that affect my knowledge of m1? If m1 and m2 are independent, then if I know m2, it shouldn't change anything about what I believe about m1. So therefore, this must be equal to that because it's independent of m2. Okay, so that's just a very quick review of probability, or of basic probability theory. But, the joint entropy of message sets M1 and M2, I can write this as H M1 M2. Let's remember the form of entropy, H of M, is equal to the sum of all possible messages, probability of M, log 2, 1 over probability of M, like so. So we would expect that the joint entropy would make use of the joint probability in much the same way. would be the sum over M1 and M2 in both message sets of the joint probability like so. So we just substitute this probability with the joint probability. And that makes some sense. So basically, what's the interpretation of this? We're looking at the most compact possible representation if I'm trying to send two messages at once. 
But what I can do instead is interpret this as one super message, or one super message set composed of the Cartesian product of the two sets. So in other words, there's uh, a Cartesian product of, 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 of all possible pairs of messages from these two sets, and I can pick one of those pairs, and the probability of that pair is just equal to that. So basically, this is just a straight up substitution of this probability, which would be interpreted as this superset, by this joint probability, which would be over the two individual sets. Okay, one, there's one interesting consequence of this. So let's suppose Suppose the messages M1 and M2, the message sets M1 and M2 are independent. Let's think of, actually, let, let me go back for a second and let's think about what it means for messages to be dependent. So, for example, um, we could have a security system where, let's say, I'm just drawing sort of a top view of a floor plan here. Actually, let's say this is an airport, and I want to know where passengers are at any given time in the security area. So um, I'm funneling my passengers into here, and here is the x-ray machine, and here is the metal detector. So passengers come along, and the first message is the passengers arrive at the x-ray machine. So if that has happened, if I know that that's happened, then it's much, it's very likely that shortly after that, the passenger will arrive at the, at the metal detector. So therefore, these, these messages are strongly related. So I know, if, if I know that the passenger has arrived at the x-ray machine, then I can pick a much shorter representation of whether that passenger has arrived at the metal detector or something, something of that nature. So when messages are dependent, um, you can, you can take advantage of that fact. You can take advantage of your knowledge of one of the messages to create a much shorter representation for the second message. So in other words, uh, you can use this as sort of side information to affect your, your knowledge of the encoding of the other message. On the other hand, what if you have two security lanes? And I want to encode whether someone is at either one of the X-ray machines or the other. You would expect these to be independent, so you would expect that there would be no, if you know that someone is at one X-ray machine, that doesn't really help you understand whether someone's at the other X-ray machine. So over here, suppose M1 and M2 are independent. What does that mean? That H of M1 and M2 is equal to the sum over P M1, M2, log to 1 over P of M1, M2. Okay, firstly, if M1 and M2 are independent, what do I have? How does that break down? At least you just multiply. So, P M1 times P M2, like so. So if I substitute that down here, what do I get? Like that. Um, how can I simplify this? Minus. So yeah, what I can do is I can say I can take the minus out. And that's just log 2 of PM1, PM2. 